All right. Hello, everybody. Looks like everyone's just kind of hopping on now. So we'll just give it a few minutes. Thanks for joining. Let's see. Okay. I'll start my slideshow in just a second here, just kind of letting people pop in. You know, we always have a few latecomers. And I will, I'm going to bring up the slideshow now. I know people are just getting in. We won't start just yet, but we can start some introductions and things like that. So let me. All right. Welcome everybody as you're jumping in and we just have a couple minutes until we get started. So if you want to just say hello, introduce yourself and maybe share one thing you like about yourself and one thing you dislike about yourself. That one's always a little, a little harder, right? But just kind of, um, you know, getting us thinking about that, getting us introspecting a bit, becoming a little more self-aware as we're waiting for everyone to hop in. And you can do that in the questions area below. Um, and you see that in the, on your panel here. Awesome. All right, people are still coming in. Okay. All right, and then just hello to everybody that's just joined. And if you wanna just take a second, or have a few coming in, um, share one thing you like about yourself and share one thing you dislike about yourself. So again, kind of just getting us introspecting, getting us in that self-awareness place and prepared for what we're going to dive into today. Hey Hope, nice to meet you. Ken, I know Ken. Ken used to come to my um, talks up in the Bay Area uh, the mind talks. Oh, he can't hear us or can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Okay, spring shared hard worker. Um, just like that you take on too much and not enough for me, not enough time for me um, and family time. Okay, thanks for sharing. That's that's great. Appreciate it. Okay, Donna likes her persistence and disliked inability or unable to say no. I can relate to that. <laughs> that was the old belief that I had to work through. All right, and okay, we have a bunch coming in. So for Tessa, um, aware of my feelings, dislike that I take on the world and not allow myself to heal. Okay, yeah, lots of us are guilty of that too. Um, great, Ken figured out his audio. Awesome, thanks for joining us, Ken. Uh, Misty, oh, supposed to share in, it's a little bit interesting for this one. We're using GoToWebinar, so the questions panel is on the right, and you can just type below um, where it says type question here. So I think for mine it says answer, um, and just hit enter, and we should all see it. Hey, Ramon, nice to see you. Ramon is been at lots of these webinars and also at my mind talks in the Bay Area. Tammy, determination, that's beautiful. Okay, wow, we have a lot jumping in. Lisa Zimmerman, giving and dislike the judginess. Definitely can relate to that as well. Thanks, Lisa. Awesome. All right. I think we always have a few more kind of jump in, but we can get started. Um, okay. Oh, I'm going to read one more. Actually, just had a couple more pop in. Oh, hello from Athens, Greece. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. I have no idea what time it is there. It's probably a lot different than it is here. Um, so I'm glad the timing worked out. Okay. And then Amanda, I love that I'm caring about others, but I'm a people pleaser and have a hard time making boundaries. Yes. Lots of people can relate to that for sure. And then Karen, optimistic and dislike that I need self-confidence. Also something that's big for a lot of us. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we have about 55 of us right now, so we'll always have a few more kind of hop in. 
Um, and today I have a different narrator. We usually have Sky. So if you've joined us before, Sky's done a great job kind of fielding questions while I'm going through the training to kind of keep the flow of things. But today we have Isaiah Zimmerman, who is my partner and co-founder at Self by Design. He's also an NLP practitioner, a coach, and a mindfulness consultant for corporations. So he's kind of the guy to go to for, you know, understanding if mindfulness is right for your corporation and really learning about how that can help your employees. So he's going to field the questions for you guys today. So he knows um, just as much as I do. And here he is, just going to hop on and say hello and, and, you know, just give a little wave and then read your questions. He'll be popping in and out. Hi hey everyone, hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm excited to be on here and join Nicole on a, our first one of these webinars together. So it's uh, the first of many and we're gonna, any questions you guys have, you can reach out to me here You can in the portal. You can follow up at our design. And I'm going to be in the background answering questions. I'm going to have my camera off, but I'm here if you guys need anything. All right. Thanks, Isaiah. Awesome. Okay. He's going to hop out. He will be here kind of running the show in the background and we'll, we'll get started. All right. And thank you again for, for sending in your responses. I'll kind of keep, you know, checking back and Isaiah is going to really keep an eye on the, the questions and we'll loop them into the conversation. Okay. So I'm going to rid of my camera here. Um, all right, welcome. So this is part of our mindfulness training masterclass series. And this is a series that we do every few months, uh, just helping you understand yourself, helping you create the life that you desire and really just become the person that you're destined to be. And um, we also work with Next Gen EAP, which is an EAP provider that creates a really holistic solution for their clients. Um, they offer prepaid counseling as well as this mindfulness training series. So if you're joining from your next gen EAP program, welcome. And we're super excited to just be here and, and able to provide that with you. All right, so today we are talking about creating higher self-awareness. Oop, is mine jumping ahead? Let's see, there we go. Higher self-awareness and self-understanding, right? And always based on neuroscience psychology, that's where a lot of my background lies. So I'm always taking in principles from both of those disciplines to really communicate um, you know, this knowledge to you and this understanding and then help you experience it for yourself. So who am I? For um, those of you that are new, I am Nicole Ramondi, the founder of Self by Design. I'm a mindfulness trainer, a mindset coach, and an NLP practitioner. So I began uh, this work starting with um, executives, managers, and entrepreneurs coaching them privately, and I'm now training corporations. And the difference with my approach versus other coaches or other even training programs is I have a really heavy focus on the subconscious mind. So we'll, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later and really dive into it, but that's really where your beliefs, habits, emotions, um, and your behaviors live. And we talk about connecting that mind to the conscious mind so you can make the changes, changes that you desire in your life. Um, and a lot of just programs and coaches out there are not really talking about that and not really, um, you know, allowing us to tap into that, that reservoir and that inner wisdom. And so my method takes that approach and combines it with the neuroscience psychology and even a bit of spirituality to master the power of our minds and show you how to really create that new reality for yourself. So how did I get here? How did I get into this work? Um, it's a long story, probably don't have time for all of it today, but the short story is, is I was physically, mentally, emotionally unwell for many years. Um, you know, went the traditional route of going to, you know, regular doctors and in the traditional healthcare and medicinal route, really wasn't seeing a lot of progress. Um, so I saw every doctor underneath the sun and then realized, okay, maybe there's an alternative route. I started to see holistic, more naturopathic practitioners, and that's where I really found nutrition and fitness and that holistic lifestyle piece there, made a lot of progress, did a lot of healing, but still was really not at the root of things. Um, and then I eventually found a holistic therapist who brought in you know, the mind, body, soul components and really showed me that I had not explored a lot of my limiting beliefs and how I was you know, creating my identity and just how I was moving through the world with um, 
kind of this incapacity to deal with my emotions and really understand myself and understand others. And from there, I did about the amount of healing that I'd done in 10 years doing it externally, right? And with that internal approach, I healed, um, you know, much greater and a much quicker uh, capacity in about a year. And so from there, I knew, hey, this is the route for me. This is what I want to teach the world about. This is how I really want to show up in the world. It's really kind of to me, um, just a disservice that we've done to our culture, that we don't learn about the mind, that we don't learn about ourselves and our emotions. And so I went back to school and I studied neuroscience at Stanford University. I studied psychology. Um, and then I got into a lot of the spiritual component with really just aligning visions and values. And what does that higher purpose mean to you and that higher connection? Um, and so I take all of that expertise and I bring it to these trainings as well as the corporate trainings that we do um, and previously my private coaching. Okay, so what makes my philosophy different? Again, really just diving into the subconscious mind and I believe in the power and energy of live guided training, right? So this is why I love getting on live with you guys going through this, answering questions. I like it to be as interactive as possible. I know sometimes it's hard when we're virtual. Um, of course, I love being in person even more, but I really think it's a disservice to, um, you know, our culture to really, to always be doing the um, kind of pre-recorded courses or even books or anything that's self-guided. And I think we really need uh, an accountability partner and a guide to walk with us on this journey. And I always focus on experience over knowledge, right? So we really want you to feel this and experience it versus just understanding it, um, which again, I feel like a lot of trainings kind of fall short on. All right, so let's get into the you know presentation itself, learning about your you know, self-awareness and self-understanding. And so kind of the roadmap that we're gonna take today is talking about how mindfulness leads to self-awareness. Then we're gonna meet ourselves and talk about the conscious and subconscious minds. And then we're gonna do a little exercise to discover your vision and values, uh, these pieces that we often really don't make time or space for in our lives. And so we're gonna do it today and we're gonna experience it and we're gonna put that knowledge into practice. All right. So mindfulness leads to self-awareness. So I really just wanted to start with what is self-awareness? actually, right? Like what's the definition of self-awareness? I think we always have different definitions of, of things. And I found in the training, it's really good to kind of, you know, get a universal definition for how we're thinking and moving through, um, you know, this idea and this concept. So self-awareness is the habit of paying attention to the way you think, feel, and behave. More specifically, it's about observing your thoughts, your emotions, and your behaviors, right? You're becoming that observer and you're getting curious about yourself and your mind and the way that you're showing up in the world, right? And so that's self-awareness. We're kind of changing that focus from an external one to an internal one. The big question is, is how do we get curious, right? How do we shift that focus? Um, definitely a question that I asked myself a lot earlier on, like, well, how, what do you mean, like, introspect and, and how? How do I see myself? Um, and that route I've found for myself and for many, and of course, is a big theme in the way that I teach is mindfulness. So I really believe that mindfulness is the path to self-awareness. And the definition of mindfulness for me is that awareness that arises when you're paying full attention to the present moment and you're meeting it non-judgmentally. That's a huge, huge piece here, right? With what you don't wanna show up with judgment. Um, I know we even mentioned some people don't like their, their judginess, right? And I could definitely have a high degree of that, but really just showing up and saying, okay, here's what's going on for me. I'm not judging it. I'm just going to meet it with curiosity and compassion. So why mindfulness? Why is this such um, a kind of a theme in our culture right now? Why are we really thinking about this lately, talking about it, doing trainings on it, right? And it's because we're currently living in this attention economy and we have so many competing demands for our attention, right? We even had in the chat people saying, you know, like, I don't have enough time for myself or for my family or for what I really want in life, right? And so Mindfulness is that way to pull us out of that autopilot and those patterns and those habits um, and behaviors that we're running every single day, which are happening in our subconscious mind. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And it brings us back to that present moment, right? And so we're in that consciousness so we can really see ourselves fully and we can take a step back, create that space and say, hey, wait a minute. 
maybe I don't want to be behaving that way. Maybe there's a better choice or maybe there's a different choice or something that I'm missing, right? And mindfulness is that component to really bring us into that space and help us repattern and create you know, that next version of ourselves and that lifestyle that we really desire. So really what we're doing here is we're learning to pay attention, right? And I wanna talk about the difference between attention and meta attention. So attention is directing your focus towards an object, person, or activity, right? It's like right now I'm, you know, I'm paying attention to the webinar. I'm, I'm going through um, the steps and, and fielding the questions and, you know, just interacting with you, right? But meta attention is when you switch that focus from that external view and place it on yourself and become the observer of yourself and your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, right? So you're really seeing yourself. And it's kind of like this, as interesting as it sounds, but like this outside awareness, right? Where it's almost like you're taking a little bit of a step back from yourself so you can see yourself and be like, oh, okay, hold on, Nicole, you just did that again. Maybe that's not the way that you wanna move. Or, oh, I really like that. Like, let's do more of that, right? And so kind of just creating a couple of degrees of separation so you can have that higher level of observance and really, really see yourself and what's coming up for you and, and how you're showing up. So how do we do that? We need to move from autopilot. So that's the subconscious mind, right? And these, these beha behaviors and these, these habits and patterns that are just running all the time to that level of awareness. And the first step that, um, you know, to this, this process that I like to teach is always awareness, right? And so we want to recognize the undesirable pattern, whatever that is, right? If I, I'm, you know, if you're saying I'm becoming angry a lot or yeah, I'm judging others really highly or I'm not making time for myself, whatever that is, you just want to recognize it. As simple as it sounds, it's a huge step to really kind of bring it to the surface and be like, ah, there it is again. Then we want to become the observer. So you're creating that space and you're meeting it with full presence, right? So that's kind of that degree of separation. Instead of making it personal, you know, judging yourself and all those other pieces, you're just kind of stepping back and saying, hmm, that's interesting. Like, let's get curious about it. And by doing that, you're accepting it, right? And to the next step, you're removing that judgment and you're adding in that curiosity and it's no longer good or bad, right or wrong. It's just like, hey, like, shit, this is coming up, right? Like This is happening right now. Where do I go from here? And then we can start to redesign and add choice back in, choose a new empowering pattern because you've developed that self-awareness. Where do we want to go from here? And then how do we practice that new pattern until it's your, your new version of yourself? So in bringing that all together, mindfulness leads to self-awareness and self-understanding, right? It's the first step to kind of lead you down that path. And that's the foundation for the kind of the rest of the um, hierarchy for self-actualization, let's even call it, right? Because if you're mindful of what's happening with your patterns and behaviors and emotions, you have that degree of self-awareness, you're able to manage yourself, which is a lot of what we talk about later uh, in the Mindfulness Leadership Institute, kind of working with that emotional mastery and how do you manage what's coming up for you, right? And then taking that outward in a way that you're empathic, understanding and compassionate towards others because you're, you can do those things for yourself, which facilitates better relationships. So it's kind of like this first piece and this catalyst into um, you know, self-awareness and then those steps that, that follow. Any questions or anything coming up yet that I... Okay. All right. So let's meet ourselves. Let's take a second here and learn about these two levels of the mind, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. I've already mentioned it a few times, but I want to just break it down a little bit further so you really understand your your mind, right? And yourself and um, you know, kind of just the the hardware or the operating system that you're working with, because we often don't take the time to really understand that and then understand how it's showing up for our, ourselves in our life. Okay, so we have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And the metaphor that I love to use, this is really big in psychology. So if you've taken any sort of psychology course or training, certification, anything like that, you will probably see this metaphor because it's such a beautiful one. But it just shows that we have these two levels of the mind and the conscious mind is really only 5% of the mind, right? And so that's your critical thinking, your analytical thinking, your short-term memory and your willpower. So, and that's also your mindfulness practice because to bring it you know, from below the surface to above the surface, 
we need to be able to say, hey, like this is what's happening. It's now conscious. I'm aware of it, right? Because if it was completely unconscious, you wouldn't have any awareness. And maybe somebody else might say, hey, like Nicole, you're doing that thing again. I noticed this, this for you. And that's why we can have friends do that and partners and coaches, right? And we're like, oh my God, I didn't even know I was doing it because it's unconscious. But our work is to really be able to be able to do that for ourselves, right? And make that conscious. Then the subconscious mind is 95% of the mind. So this is what a lot of us don't recognize, right? Is so our brain and our biology has adapted in a way where it wants to make our you know, beliefs, emotions, habits, even that long-term memory, of course, biological processes, really automated and really energy conserving. So if you do something and maybe it works for you in childhood, 25, 30 years ago, your, your subconscious mind and your body says, hey, like that works, that, that's a good way to move through life. It's easy, it's energy conserving, it's safe, and it gets us what we want. But a lot of the times those patterns don't work for us in our later years, right? Because you're not that seven-year-old anymore and you're not living in a rural area anymore or you're not working that job anymore. Whatever that is, those patterns can become outdated. And so we really want to focus on what's happening under the water or under the hood or whatever you want to call it, underneath that, that conscious awareness and bring that to the surface so we can repattern it. And I love this quote from Carl Jung, uh, where he says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate, right? And so he's really just saying, until you bring those things to the surface, you will always be led by what's happening underneath the surface and kind of unawake and unaware to what's really going on. And so let's dive into this just a little bit deeper over um, you know, the next couple of slides here. So mindfulness is the conscious mind, right? So when we're working on mindfulness, we're training our thoughts, behaviors, habits, and emotions so we can see them. Again, you're becoming that observer, you're getting conscious. And the key here is you're really allowing yourself to meet your whole self, the good, the bad, the ugly, the dark, and the light. And that's what I think a lot of us leave out of mindfulness, right? You're like, oh, I just want to be love and light and beautiful and, and like be in this blissful state, right? But a lot of us don't practice mindfulness or really understand it because we don't want to make those darker parts of ourselves, those parts that I had you list, like what do you not like about yourself seen, right? Because we don't want to know about those. But true mindfulness is seeing all of it, really, like putting a lens on yourself and saying, oh, I don't like that, you know, I'm, I'm going to remove the judgment because it's exactly what's happening for me. But is there a better choice? Is there a way to improve? And is there a new version of myself that I can work towards? So the reason that a lot of us don't do this, right, is it's easier to stay unconscious a lot of the times or unawake or unaware. And all of these show that we're underneath the surface, right? You're kind of just staying in that darkness. Maybe it feels safe. Maybe it requires less energy. Maybe you're really attached to that's who you are. But we really want to work to make those things conscious and remove the judgment from them so we can start to create that new version of ourselves. And that transformation only happens in the subconscious mind. So again, this is a really primal part of our brain and mind. It it's, it's, was developed to really conserve energy and to just you know, operate on these patterns and habits that we've been operating on for a really long time. It's running all our biological processes in our body. So it's doing a lot of work. It's, it's really working hard for us, but it contains who you are at an identity level which is your values and your beliefs. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit. In a little bit. Um, and this is the, the kind of only way to make change, right? Because a lot of us wanna make change from the environmental or even capabilities level. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but who you are and how you're showing up in the world and being able to have the self-awareness to identify that is where that change is going to happen. So your being that and how you're showing up versus doing it, right? And, and just trying to create that new reality um, through, like I said, behaviors or through your environment in an external way. You want it to have that internal, internal identity-based uh, approach. And all true change, healing, and transformation happens here. Why? Let's get into that a little bit further and move through these levels, levels of change. And so this is something, if you've been to my webinars, I would say this is probably about, or masterclass is about, um, you know, in half of them, uh, maybe a little less. It's definitely 
Uh, we do a deep dive of it in the Mindfulness Leadership Institute, but this is often called neurological levels of change. Um, and what it really describes is how we can introspect, see ourselves, right? And then move through those levels of ourself to make effective change in our life. And often we're starting at these lower rungs, like I just talked about, in your environment or with your behaviors, like, oh, I'm going to stop doing this. I want to, I, I don't want to, you know, um, whatever, be angry anymore or say those things or judge people this way, right? But what we really want to do is work at the layer of the subconscious mind here and our identity and our values and beliefs to make that effective change. So you're starting at the top of this, this, this triangle and this hierarchy and you're cascading down instead of working your way up. And again, that mindfulness and self-awareness allows us to work at these higher rungs and kind of move up the ladder in that way so we can have that cascade down effect instead of constantly being unconscious, unaware, and working on our environment and working on our behaviors down here in the lower rungs. And so this is an example I've given before. I love this example because it's very concrete. It's easy. I also live in San Diego. There's a lot of surfers here. Um, you know, something that I would love to get into, but it's, it's, you know, it's not easy, right? It's like learning a new skill or entering a new relationship or uh, starting a new career path, whatever it is, it's really a whole new way of being and moving in the world. <clears throat> and so in order for you to show up in this model that we've just talked about, we're gonna work at the identity level first and show up as I am a surfer, right? Instead of you're trying to be a surfer, you're learning, you're practicing, you are a surfer. If you're getting out there, uh, like whatever, once a week to start off in the morning, well, that's a lot better than most of us are doing. So you are a surfer and, and adopting that mentality right from the start instead of um, talking about it in a way that that's not who you are and, and creating this degree of separation. Then we're going to get into the values, and this is going to be the exercise that we're going to do together. But I just want to start with this example. So your values that lead you to this new, um, you know, way of being and, and this new exercise is connection to nature. Maybe it's a healthy lifestyle, so you really value health. Maybe it's introspection time. That's your time to really just have that self-awareness and kind of put the lens on yourself and, and think about work or think about uh, that conversation you had or think about what else you can be doing in your life differently, right? And maybe it leads to self-mastery and growth for you. So you really feel like you're growing during those that time and you're out there on the water. And then we look at our beliefs. Okay, I'm strong. I have a capable body and mind. There's always room for progress. So, so surfing is a way to show you there's always room for improvement and you're a better person because of surfing. So you're experiencing challenge and growth and movement, right? And so that's a lot easier to make that change and become that surfer, runner, um, better parent, whatever it is that you want to be when you're starting with these higher layers versus starting at the lower rungs and uh, trying to just change the behavior and force yourself to get out there on the board or put your running shoes on or whatever that is. So we always want to start with that, again, self-awareness and then moving through those, those layers of the mind that are going to help us create and model this new version of ourselves. Okay, oh, and I lost my mouse. So the conscious mind has the will, but the subconscious mind has the power. And this is a this is a big quote that I say often in my trainings. I use it a lot in my coaching, right? Because a lot of us love to come in and say, like, I want to be a surfer. I want to, um, you know, start a family. I want to move to Italy or whatever that is. And great. So we've set the intention with our conscious mind. That's we're aware of what we want. But now the subconscious mind is going to drive us there. And we just talked about how we access the subconscious mind by getting into that identity and beliefs layer. And so really our work for this, this high level of self-awareness and knowing yourself is connecting the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. We want them to collaborate and work in harmony versus having this this disconnect, right? And this unconscious kind of material that we're not even aware of these habits and beliefs and emotions, um, and then having that separation with what we want, right? And that's kind of where we create that friction, that resistance, or that frustration, we're like, oh, I really want to get a new job or make that move, but I just can't seem to do it. Well, it's because we've, we've created a disconnect. And just as a reminder, mindfulness is always the bridge for that disconnect, right? We always want to have that, that awareness practice to bring us 
to that present moment and realize like, hey, where where can I go here? What is what is actually happening underneath the surface? And giving yourself the space and the time for that allows it to come up and, and resurface. Are we having any questions or anything here? I know I'm All moving good. through it. All good. Okay. All right. So let's move into the exercise. And I wanted to um, you know, give us enough time to do this together and really kind of dive in because again, I know a lot of times in our daily lives, and I was definitely guilty of this too, is we don't really make time to think about what do I actually want and what are my values? Like, why do I want it? Right. And so again, we're working at these higher rungs that we often don't even think about or even know are available to us to to shift and and to create those higher levels of self-awareness so that we can continue improving ourselves. And I wanted to include this too before we jump into the exercise. So the way to continue this work is to kind of find your mindfulness bridges, I call it, right? Or, or your mindfulness practices, because everybody thinks that mindfulness is just meditation, right? And like sitting in this this perfect, whatever, seated position with your mudras and like, you know, om or, or all that crap, right? But it's that's one way of being mindful is meditation, sure. Um, I, I use it every day, right? Where you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, what's coming up? And again, it's really not about eliminating your thoughts. A lot of people think that it's just about being present with your thoughts. And so it comes up and you're like, wait a second, I'm, I've kind of had this observer position is that something that I want to keep thinking? Is that supportive of me? Where is this coming from, right? And giving yourself that space. Journaling has also been a huge, huge help for me and a lot of my clients. And, you know, I use it also in the trainings now where you just kind of free, free write and see what comes up for you by creating that space. And this is a huge tool for self-awareness <clears throat> that we're often not implementing um, because like we talked about earlier, if you're free writing and just kind of letting yourself go, you'd be really interested to see what comes up. And maybe you really see a fear that you haven't been able to look at or that you need to leave a job or a relationship or whatever that is, that free writing and that kind of stream of consciousness, um, you know, open space is going to allow these things to come up for you. You can also just take long walks or go for a run, right? These are all forms of quote unquote meditation where you're kind of in this space and you're able to introspect and you've created that time um, and that space for yourself to really have these things come up and then be able to, to move from there. Yoga is also another <clears throat> kind of training modality for self-awareness. And often we start with the body with yoga, right? We're like, okay, well, how does it feel? And you, if you feel tension here, like release it and move through it. And it's just kind of training ourselves to take that practice and map it to our own self-awareness, right? So if you're feeling the body, you can also feel your emotions. You can also feel what's coming up for you as far as thoughts and behaviors. Okay, and then just really asking the tough important questions, whatever that looks like, whether you're going to journal on them, you're going to do it here in a training uh, with a friend, we really want to create that space to um, increase that degree of self-awareness by introspecting and asking the questions that we often don't make time for. So let's start by setting your internal compass, because if you're going to establish a high degree of self-awareness and move through the world, <clears throat> making decisions based on what you want and whether it aligns or doesn't align and whether it's who you are, who you're not, right? We need to know where we're going and what you want. And then we're going to look at how you'll know when you have it. So really just kind of getting clear on that vision and then why do you want it? So this is the most important piece. What does it mean to you? Why is it important to you? And again, we often are able to say we want something, but we're not really sure why and what values it's representing for us. Okay, so let's jump into the first qu first question. So what do you want? Um, and again, if, if you have a you know notebook here, if you just want to do it in your mind and maybe write it down later, um, and in a second here, we can enter some of those those answers into the chat to kind of just get us thinking and, and seeing what others are feeling as they move through this. But I really want you to just take a second and just think about one thing that you want. Right. And it could be in the time frame just in the next couple of months. Like, let's not get too far out. But just what do you want to create in your life? Call into your life. Just what do you desire? And really just owning that desire and whatever it is that you're looking to call in. 
So just take a second and think about that and, and um, you know, write it down or just kind of map that into your mind. Okay, and then if we wanna do a little example, like for me, let's say it could be, I want a thriving training business, right? And, uh, or it could be, I want a, you know, loving relationship with my family and, and deeper connection. Or maybe for you, it could be, um, I want to travel abroad for six months and like see and experience the world. So anything like that. Okay, how will you know you have it? So this is from Neuro Linguistic Programming, the certification that I have and that I use in a lot of the training um, and coaching that I've done. Um, and it's really just our subconscious mind, it sees and moves and understands through images, right? And sensations. So often when we say we want something, it's very conscious. Like I want a you know great business or great family um, or travel abroad, but what do you actually see when you have it and so really just stating it in the present and getting really really specific and that's why i would encourage you to take the time on your own to even go back and for me i've gotten so specific that you're literally describing you know the colors and just using like really really descriptive beautiful language to create that because that is mapping it into your subconscious mind like ooh, yes that's what we're after that's what we're creating and then you can use that self-awareness to kind of calibrate if you're on that that track right and that's that's your compass so what will you see um let's see for me it could be if we're going to go back to the training example obviously i have this you know beautiful training business and we're expanding it um maybe it's i see lots of people uh really doing the work and showing up for themselves and they're smiling and they're um you know just kind of supporting each other and they're just really healthy and vibrant and glowing, right? And so it could be something like that. For me, of course, for you, it's gonna look very different. All right. And then what will you hear? So again, we're speaking to the senses and really bringing you there and making this vision really real so that we can align your values and, and keep this, this compass, your self-awareness compass, let's call it um, really calibrated. So uh, for me, it could be, um, you know, I hear the chatter of the room as I enter before it's, I start this big training and I hear messages of gratitude after of, of people um, explaining how this, this really shifted their life, their relationships, right? Or maybe I hear clapping. So whatever that is for you, really take a second to acknowledge and um, you know capture what you hear. Okay, and the last one is what will you feel? So now we're really dropping into the body, dropping into the sensations. Uh, again, vision and visuals are often very conscious, but we wanna really get into the subconscious mind and just get down into those sensations. So maybe for me, it's I feel connected and I feel calm and I feel alive or loved. Um, you know, maybe for you it's adventurous or you feel um, just a sense of freedom, right? Whatever that is for you. And this is really good. We're kind of warming the, the gears here to get into our values. So values are often very feelings-based and this is where we're gonna hop next, but just kind of getting that down right now. Like what do you really feel um, sensation-wise in your body um, and what emotions are you eliciting when you have this, this goal and this vision?
Okay, we're gonna jump to value. So this is the most important part, right? And this is something that really changed everything for me, do with all my clients, and it's in it's at a much higher level in the Mindfulness Leadership, Leadership Institute training and really diving into your values and how you're leading in the world and how you're showing up um, based on what is really important and meaningful to you. And again, this is a high degree of self-awareness and self-understanding because most of us don't truly understand our values because we haven't taken the time to really break down what they are. Um, and for the most part, they remain the same. They can shift obviously according on base, uh, based on like where you are in your life and kind of who you become, but there really are some core values that for the most part run through our life and, and are a theme um, for us and just kind of our own uniqueness and our own magic. So having, um, you know, your vision. So like for me, I guess I'm using the, tr the example of a uh, thriving training business will give me and what values will that give you or what will that allow you to experience? And I put here on the next slide, we can kind of jump back and forth, but kind of a list of different values that I've heard it in my own, um, you know, private coaching and in training that you can really start to kind of use as inspiration for your own. And sometimes people just know right away, like, I don't need the list. I have my own values or I have at least an idea of what they are. Um, but this list can often be helpful and just kind of seeing um, yeah, what's most meaningful to you and maybe picking a few. So if I were to start back here and my kind of highest level of values and, and really before I dive into those deeper core ones, maybe for me, it's appreciation, right? I talked about people like showing gratitude. Maybe for me, uh, the business means abundance or success or health and wellness, um, growth, learning, generosity, kindness, Right. And so kind of just getting those, just really being a little more loose with it and just kind of brainstorming and just getting those out there. And if you want to share a few in the chat, um, we can start to share here um, and just kind of, you know, showing how you want to experience yourself and experience um, this vision in the world. Right. So maybe just a few values, whether it's freedom. Um, let's see other ones over here. Uh, you know, simplicity, selflessness making a difference, excellence, maybe you want to experience independence or spirituality, right? And so just kind of getting that, getting the gears going. Okay, and then what will that do for you, right? So now we want to go back to those values. It's like, okay, you know, let's use this as an example, like I'm coaching myself. Okay, Nicole, so you want to experience appreciation, abundance, success, you want health and wellness, you want to grow and learn. So what are those things going to do for you? Like, why do you really want those? Because often when we think about our values, we're starting at a more surface level, and we really want to get into what the core of our values are. And so maybe I would be like, hmm, okay, well, wow, I didn't, I didn't really think about that, I didn't go any deeper with it. So maybe um, I really want to experience connection and creativity, right? The business allows me to be super creative and contribution is a big one for me. Um, and I wanted, I wanna be passionate in my work and I also wanna be really playful and make it fun, right? And so now we're starting to really, really introspect and, and ask ourselves that, that deeper question, like, well, what really matters? Like, why do you really, really want that? And really, it's just a succession of asking yourself that question as many times as you need to, to get down to it. And when I was doing private coaching, I had clients sometimes that could get to it in two or three questions. Sometimes literally, you know, 12 times, we're like, hey, what do you, what do you really want though? Like, why, why is this really meaningful to you? And we often find that those values are so different than what we thought, right? So uh, maybe you're coming at the higher rungs and you're saying you want respect and appreciation and um, recognition, right? But then we get down to the lower levels. Like, why do you really, really want that? And it could be love. It could be connection. It could be you want a sense of security or you want a sense of freedom. And so really diving into this helps us align with ourselves and, and really know how we're moving through the world. And um, so we can show up with that, that kind of value system. So for me, let's say if my, you know, second rung was creativity, connection, contribution, um, 
what was it passion and and playfulness then maybe if i ask myself again well okay nicole what does that really mean like what do you really really want oh okay actually it's love and I want freedom to just be myself and express myself. And I'm doing that um, through sharing this work with you all. And I'm doing that through uh, my connection with my family and uh, my connection with nature, whatever that is, right? And then maybe the kind of passion and playfulness, what does that really mean for me? Oh, that just, that is, is happiness or joy. And so my highest values that I'm leading by and that I wanna be showing up by are love, freedom, and happiness. And I want you to arrive to your top ones so you can know how you're moving and um, what's really, really important to you. Jason just shared, mine is I want to be happy. So there it is. And it could be just one, right? Like Jason looks like he did this in enough layers where he was like, I, I just want to be happy. And so everything that he is going to be creating in his life or making a choice on, he wants to check in and, and ask, does this align with my happiness and how I want to experience that happiness and continually moving that way. And so if yours is kindness, right? Everything that you do and every interaction you have, am I showing up with kindness? Is Am I being a kind person? And the interesting thing about that and we can we can jump um, you know to this next piece here is when you align with your values, it really fuels your confidence and your connection and your understanding of yourself because you are being what you value, right? And so often in our life, we are trying to be something that we might not value that other people value, and then we're kind of losing ourselves and feeling like we're not showing up as our highest self because maybe somebody else really values contribution and wants you to make a difference in the world. And you're like, oh, I'm trying and I don't know how to experience that or whatever, but you really just want inner peace and you really just want, um, you know, like a, a quiet, a quiet space. And you really enjoy a life of just, you know, living by the beach and reading or whatever that is, right? Maybe it's just, you're misaligned with the way that the world and others want you to show up because you haven't really notice your values and really lived and moved by them. So again, just the more you're, you're being and living by the values, the closer you are to your true self and the more you're gonna increase your levels of confidence you know, and your self-esteem and your levels of happiness. So if anybody else wants to share um, what came up to them, came up to them, came up for them, go ahead and put it in the chat here and share with us just, yeah, what, what's your highest value or highest couple of values? I know a lot of you probably wrote them down, but if anybody wants to pop anything in there, I'm, I'm looking now. Cynthia shared compassion. Okay, beautiful. That's a really, really beautiful one too. And so that's great, Cynthia. So now every you know decision you make, every conversation you have, is this coming from a place of compassion? Am I showing up with compassion? Like for me, I might ask, love is a really big one for me. Am I showing up with love? Am I leading with love? Am I being love? You can even say, and really just continue aligning with that. Okay. Um, balance and healed from Jacqueline. Beautiful. Ramon is connection and contribution. Really, really, really beautiful. One of my highest values is freedom. Yeah. Me too, Tiffany. And love from Tammy. Happiness and love. Yeah. And see, I think that's the beautiful thing too about us and, and, you know, being humans and the human condition is a lot of our values are the same, or the highest values, let's say, when we think that they're, they're so different. But when you really get to the root of it, we really, really all just want to be happy and loved and in a place of peace and connection, right? So we're sharing a lot of the same values. It might just be how you want to experience those values, right? So maybe you want to feel love with a family and maybe somebody else wants to feel love with nature or something different. Right. And so it's just kind of how you want to express and experience those values. Health mentally and physically for myself and my daughter, Adriana. That's beautiful. Um, Self-awareness, acceptance of my true self, Andrea. Great. That's really, really beautiful. So I'm glad you guys really took the time to align with these values and really um, just, yeah, introspect, look inside and, and know that this is the way that you wanna show up in the world and, and move in the world and, and share yourself with those around you. Cause that's really what this work is about, right? You're doing it for yourself to understand yourself, but really that leads to that next layer that we talked about earlier on as understanding others and offering empathy and compassion and understanding towards, towards those around us um, and improving our relationships, improving our lives and just improving the, the world. 
but we have a few more. I want to read them all. To be healthy and have peace with who I am. That's so beautiful, Estella. Thank you. Health, balance, and security. Yes, yes, exactly. Really, really beautiful. Thank you, um, Azella. All right. So thank you guys for, for showing up. Um, I have the Mindfulness Leadership Institute, which is a really just deeper dive on the work we did today, right? And so this is kind of just the top layers. We're working really, um, you know, at, the, at that lower level, we're building the foundation of mindfulness and self-awareness. But to do the deeper work, we have this six-week mindfulness leadership training. I've been leading organizations through this training to build more mindful, resilient, and compassionate leaders. A lot of these top values that we just talked about, because I believe a lot of the... Um, you know, challenge, a lot of the disconnect that we're having in the world today is starting with the way that um, these corporations are being run and the leaders that are kind of, um, you know, leading our, our employees and our families and our communities and really helping them to bring mindfulness and compassion and this kind of emotional, um, mental well-being into the workplace. And so for the first time, we're offering this training program to individuals um, in a group cohort. So as an individual, you don't have to be associated with an organization anymore. You can sign up and take this training with us for six weeks. Uh, it's gonna be myself and my co-founder Isaiah running everybody through it and really just, again, taking a deep, deep dive on this and giving you that hour a week to really introspect, really do this work. And then that time in between, because you're already in that headspace to really move through these levels and become that new version of yourself, learn about the subconscious mind, learn about mindfulness and awareness, and really just show up for yourself and for your family and for everyone around you. Um, either way, you can join us in a self by design community. So this is, um, you know, kind of by just little baby and safe space for everyone to just really show up and have those conversations, these higher level conversations about doing this work and we have all of our events in there. You can see them on the right-hand side here. There's recordings of our past events. If you're like, oh, this is pretty good. I wanna kind of dive deeper here. You can watch some free recordings. And then we have a lot of content in there as far as video, um, mind videos, we call them, or mind training videos. And we're adding a bunch of meditations. I think over the next couple of days, we've been working hard on creating um, a lot of meditations for you guys and recorded content. So that's all gonna be in there. And so you can always just join that for free and just. Um, kind of join the conversation and, and be in this space for yourself and again for everyone around you. Oh, I lost my mouse. And lastly, I want to just thank NextGen EAP. So NextGen, again, is one of our sponsors of this webinar. They offer it for free to all of their clients, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, again, it's anybody that has their counseling program also has access to this mindfulness training for free. So um, if that if EAP or NextGen EAP is your EAP provider, then thank you so much for joining us, for taking this hour and just really showing up for yourself. Okay, so... Um, we have about, let's see here, 10 minutes, maybe a little bit less. If there's any questions or anything um, that came up or anybody wants to share their experience or biggest insights, you can do that now. Let's see. Open up my panel again. Okay. Oh. Um, thank you, Massage. I should have to be a little slower because you were rerunning re and making it to go. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, Pavlos, yes, I will speak a little slower. I definitely like to get through a lot of content and pack as much value in as possible. So I'm definitely a fast talker. Also being from New York definitely helps that. So I'm trying to uh, readjust to the Cali lifestyle and talk slower. What is the cost, Jason Eller? Yeah, Jason, you can hop over to the website. Um, for individuals, I think it's uh, about 1,297 as the investment. Um, and it's a Great investment for that six week training. I used to uh, charge much more than that for per private training and I'm really leading um, you know, you through, through basically my coaching program that used to be three months within six weeks. And again, there's a lot more content. It's progressed a lot. And this is the same course that we're offering large and small corp corporations all over the nation. And uh, you can take it as an individual. So it's a really great investment in yourself and in uh, you know, the person that you're becoming. And yes, we can send more information. I can send the PDF. Yeah, so the slides you guys will all have and you will have the recording. So an email should be going out probably tomorrow sometime with all that information. Okay, so Jacqueline asked, 
What are the biggest obstacles that you see people encounter and how to get through them? Ooh, that's a good question, Jacqueline. I think it's really so different for so many people. Um, I think if I was to lump them into one, right, it's a kind of how they're manifesting, but really the biggest obstacle is just our kind of overcoming our own sense of, of self-worth, right? And, and um, you know, our self image and self-esteem. And so I think a lot of us set goals or, or have different aspirations and a lot of them are to help us support feeling better about ourselves and, and you know, who we are or get living by those high, highest values. But a lot of the training and the coaching is really designed to allow us to be the ones that have the agency over seeing how we're showing up in the world. And again, create that self-awareness and that kind of introspect and see yourself dialogue and realize, okay, wow, um, you know, I'm struggling with this piece of, of not feeling worthy here or not feeling enough or feeling broken. And I'm manifesting it this way or it's happening in these behaviors and these patterns and then having the tools and the accountability or even the guidance to, to make that change. And I think we're all kind of doing that in one way or another, right? And so I would say that's the overarching category. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Stella. Awesome. All right. If that's all our questions, I can let you guys hop off a few minutes early. And yeah, thank you for being here. Um, I always love doing these trainings. And so we'll have another one here very soon. So be on the lookout for that. And yeah, just thanks for making time for yourself. Thanks for showing up and learning and sharing. And I really just appreciate all of you. And I'm very grateful. Thanks. Bye now.